All right, hello there everyone. Um, today we're going to be doing a tutorial on, uh, I call it jiggle joints, or they're just sort of a, a, a way to set up dynamic joints. I'm going to go ahead and uh, show exactly what's going on here. Um, so this is a layered dynamic, uh, sort of, it has a switch on it. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and, so if we got, we've got our FK control over the joint, Okay, so we've got a switch. So if we turn on the switch, now we're in our dynamic mode. Uh, if we do our interactive playback and we control our switch, we've got a dynamic uh, sort of layer on this new uh, control. And it's, uh, it's also, we can take a look here. It's not specifically that icon that controls the dynamics. We can control it from other dynamics because it's, it's scene based. Okay, uh, and I'm also going to show you, let's go ahead and zero everything out here. I'm also going to show you how to control the stiffness of the dynamics. So if we were to bring this up to say eight, and do our interactive playback again. Let's just grab our... So now it's a little bit more of a... It seems a little bit more of a jaw now. And this is something that's really going to be useful for animation. So... Yeah, so let's get started. I went ahead and set aside a scene. So let's go ahead and open that up. And in the scene, it's just the geometry of the shield in the head, uh, and that's all there is. Let's go ahead and uh, freeze transforms. I'm going to go ahead and try to refrain from using any of my pre-scripted or um, uh, marking menus, custom marking menus, during this tutorial, just so we know exactly what's going on here. Um, one of the things I'm going to do here is let's just soften these edge normals a little bit so it looks better. Uh, and I'm just going to brighten this material up a little bit because it'll make it a little bit easier to see in the viewport. All right. Okay, so uh, first thing we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and lay out uh, some, some bind joints. Um, we only need uh, a couple of them for now. So I'm going to start with the head bind joint. So first thing I'm going to do is go into the right perspective view. Okay or the, I'm sorry, right orthographic view. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit. We can get some x-ray going on here. And uh, let's go up to our animation menu, skeleton joint tool. I'm going to click at about the base of the head. Let's keep it on the spike because it'll be, you know, more of a, because this head is just going to float on the spike. It's not going to move around too much. So let's go ahead and click at the base. Just left click, and now I'm going to hold shift and right click. This way we have a joint chain that's going straight up. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Uh, we can zero out our end joint here. That way it retains the orientation of its parent joint. Okay, so now we can come back into our perspective view. Oh, what happened here? Let me, uh, let me redo that. Something. Oh, I think I know what happened here. I zeroed out the base joint. We need to zero out the end joint here. Sorry about that. All right, so let's take our uh, our joint again. Let's go into our front view and go ahead and line it up here. Let's hit A on the keyboard so we can frame up everything. We can bring it over to about here. We can bring it up a little bit to about here. We can take our end joint and do some a little bit more uh, refinement. The placement of the end joint isn't necessary exactly, but I just like to keep it a little bit clean. All right. So now we just go back to turn off our x-ray and just x-ray joints. Okay, so now we've got the uh, bind joint for the head. Let's go ahead and name it. Uh, head. Now let's see. Joint bind uh, head zero one. Let's go ahead and copy the name, paste two, we'll name this end, end joint. All right, 
Um, the next one we're going to lay out is the the jaw. Uh, we'll, we'll notice here that from the right view it's not exactly straight ahead. So I'm just going to go from the front view, lay one out, and then just kind of rotate it into position. Okay, so let's go to our skeleton joint tool and don't click on the base joint, just anywhere kind of back here. Uh, let's click about here and uh, let's go about here. Okay, hit enter. Now we'll go into our perspective view and let's go ahead and bring this over to about where the jaw is. And we'll rotate it into position on Y. And this is where it's kind of um, annoying if you're not in a like a straight on perspective or uh, orthographic uh, axis when you're placing joints because you can see the Z uh, is kind of bend off to the side. So we just need to rotate it up to where and when you're doing this rotation you need to pee in local uh, and you need to watch where your Z set is. So let's uh, rotate around here. Okay. And it's good to just check your motion as you're as you're placing your joints here. Is this about what we want want to see? It seems about right. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring this back down again and see. Seems about right. And now we're going to uh, modify freeze transformations. Okay. And we'll modify freeze transformations on this as well. It's not going to make much of a difference on this one because we haven't rotated it all. Uh, and it, it's not really going to matter as much uh, because it's on a spike it's straight ahead. So it's not really going to, the orientation, I mean, I could sit here and rotate it. But once we have a control icon that's controlling the uh, orientation, the offset isn't going to matter because you're not going to get any sort of gimbal because it's not going to pivot off of the spike. You're not going to get any gimbal lock or anything like that. So it's not necessary. Let's go ahead and name our jaw joint bind jaw do one copy paste back end Let's go to the end here, zero two. Okay, so now we have our bind joints. Um, so what we're doing here is we're going to have an FK dynamic switch for just this one. The head bind joint isn't going to, we're not doing any sort of switching, so we only need the one chain. But for this uh, jaw, we're going to need three chains. We're going to need our bind, our dynamic, in our FK. So let's go ahead and duplicate this chain two times. And what we can do is we can just name this FK01 Let's change this FK02 Go dynamic 01 dynamic 02 okay so now we've got our three uh, jaw joints chains and our one head joint okay now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a um, a pad and a null groups for these joints uh, I have this pre-scripted out, but I'm going to go ahead and show you all the way just because I don't know exactly who my audience is on this tutorial. So I'm going to just show you the entire process. So we're going to go up to create empty group. Okay, so that's going to create a group at the origin. And then what we're going to do is use our uh, base joint here for the jaw. And we're going to select that first command or control select the empty group and we're going to go to constrain parent options box we do not want to maintain offset so let's go ahead and check that off click add what that's going to do is it's going to place the um, the group at the base of the joint 
with the correct orientation. And you can see you have some values here, but uh, that's okay. We're going to fix that in a second. So um, the only issue with this is that now this group is always with this joint. So you can see it's always there uh, because we have this parent constraint. But all we needed that parent constraint for was to position this empty group. So let's go ahead and delete this parent constraint. So now we have this empty group with some values. We don't want to freeze transformations because it's going to um, fix the transformations on this and that's not what we want. We want to make sure that it's matching up with the joint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is duplicate this uh, empty group. Actually, first I'm going to name it. I'm going to take the name from this. Let's go ahead and copy that. Paste here. We'll name this um, pad. Uh, let's let's name it pad bind. Okay. And then what we can do is we can duplicate it one time. And since we're duplicating, uh, the 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 group is not going to move to origin again because it's going to be this. It's going to have the same uh, transformations. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to rename this one um, null bind, uh, and we'll just name these zeros. We can just zero these out. We don't need the uh, numbers there anymore because that's for specific joints. Okay, so now that we have this going on. What we can do is we can just go ahead and uh, click the pad, click the null, like uh, control or command click, and we're going to parent. So now that we have this parented under this, uh, you can you notice that the pad uh, is now oriented and uh, yeah, it's oriented to the null group, which means since they're in the same location, you're going to have zero uh, transformations which is exactly what we want. Okay, uh, another thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and duplicate this twice because we need it for both the other chains. So we're gonna come in here and rename these null of k. We can delete that two. We'll say null or pad of k. Jaw. We'll come up here, say null dynamic, let's delete that one, and pad, dynamic, uh, that's, that's fair, fair enough, it kind of off, it's weird with the caps, anyway, uh, let's just, yeah, that's fine, all right, we're going to now, now what we're going to do is we're going to take our FK bind and dynamic joints and we're going to zero out these transformations by parenting them under this the uh, respective pad groups so we'll say our dynamic jaw zero one is going to go under our pad dynamic jaw group so let's go ahead and parent okay you'll notice that we have zero transformations on the uh, base joint now so let's go ahead and do that for our group so select the FK and all I'm doing is uh, selecting command or control selecting and hitting PE on the keyboard for parent. And then I'm going to go to my bind, hit P for parent. All right, so now we have all of our groups and all of our joints in our groups. Exactly what we need for our switch. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, implement the switch before we do the dynamics or the FK setup. So let's go ahead and select our dynamic chain, command select our, or com I'm using a Mac, so if I say command select, it's command or control select uh, for Windows. Uh, Alright, so we're going to select our dynamic chain, our FK chain, and our bind chain last. We need to make sure this is last because we're going to do a constraint and constraints are driver driven uh, in the selection order and depending on what the last selected item is is going to be the driven. So you could have several drivers and then one driven. So we're going to driver, driver, driven. Make sure that your bind is last. 
Okay, constraint. We're going to do an orient constraint. Maintain offset, that's okay. It, it could be on or off. I like to leave it on. Uh, usually it, it's, um, because our orientation is the same, it's not going to matter, but I, I just like to leave it on anyway. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna click add. And this is the only one that we need, but if you have a joint chain with several joints and you're doing a switch, a blend between two uh, systems, you're going to need one for every joint in the chain. And since these are end joints, we don't need orient constraints for those uh, twos. Okay, so now we have our orient constraint. And this orient constraint is blending between both dynamic chains, or both um, of the switches, switch chains. So if I take this FK chain, and let's just rotate it, you can see that in the middle, we have our bind chain. Let's go ahead and select it here. Yeah, this is our bind chain. It's because it's taking the orientation of both with this orient constraint and averaging between. So let's go ahead and zero out our FK chain. Okay. So now we need a way to switch between. And we've gone pretty far with our joints so far. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and start placing some icons. So let's take, uh, let's create a NURBS primitives circle. This is going to create a circle on the grid. Um, the way we want, let's uh, start with the head uh, bind joint. So we're just going to go ahead and minimize these for now. I'm just holding shift to collapse the group. And this is going to be the joint chain that we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and uh, make a pad and null. Um, I have, let's go ahead and, uh, I'm sorry about that. Let's go ahead and create an empty group. Um, again, joint, group, constrain, parent, no offset, add, delete the parent constraint. So now it's in place. Let's go ahead and copy the name. Let's say pad, duplicate the group, null, null values. We can get rid of these numbers. And now what we're going to do is just parent this. I can, uh, another way to parent is to middle mouse drag over and then the child over the parent, and then it'll parent it. So if I take this middle mouse drag, um, 2015 is kind of finicky. So if you let go of the mouse above it, like I've already let go, if you have, uh, sometimes you have to just wiggle it a little bit. So if you do a little bit of wiggle, it, it finishes the parenting. Uh, I'm sure they'll fix that soon enough. Um, okay, so we've got our pattern or null of our head, and. Uh, you see that the null retained all the values of the pad and the joint bind joint. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place our icon. So let's go ahead and name this icon now. So we'll say head icon. Cool. Uh, now, when we're placing this, we want to keep the same orientation as the joint. So what I'm going to do is the same method that I've been using as the parent constraint to bring it into place and then um, orient it from there. However, uh, one thing that I'm going to note is that if I were to do a parent constraint now, the uh, orientation of this is going to be different because if you look at our bind joint here, orientation, you can see that the x-axis is the one pointing up. Uh, and we want our circle to go around uh, the head, right? Well, if you look here, our z-axis is the one that's where it's pointed, um, we would say up in this situation. So I'll just use this as an example and parent constraint. And you can see that it's not going around. So let's go ahead and uh, fix this really quick. So we're going to take our icon here. We're going to rotate it 90 degrees in Y. So now uh, it's pointed down the Z axis. However, it's rate uh, has the um, rotation value still. So what we're going to do is we're going to modify freeze transformations. So now our x value is on the circle. Okay, so now we can take our uh, bind joint here, control, select our circle there. Let's constrain parent. Uh, 
So now you can see it's around. Um, and there's a couple of ways to get into position here. I can select it. Let's delete this parent constraint first. I can select it and then bring it up and then snap my pivot down. Or another way you can do this is you can turn off your joint selection mask because I know that as soon as I marquee select these control vertices, this is shape driven, not transformation driven. So you have a on every object, so we have a transformation node, but if we display our shapes, you can see we have a shape node for every transformation node. Uh, and if we move our shape node and position just our shape node, which is what we're doing here, is we're just moving components on the shape node. If we were to come out of um, component mode, back into object mode, you can notice that our transformation node is still at the base of the joint which is what we would like. It's preferable this way. Okay, another thing that you'll notice is we have values on our icon, which is not what we want because this is what we're going to be animating with uh, and we want to be able to zero out the icon and it be in the right position. Uh, so what we need to do again is another grouping system. Uh, and this time we're just going to go ahead and, and create an empty group icon group we're going to do a constrain parent delete the parent constraint and you can script this ahead of time um, and, and have uh, you know your specific icons or whatever so what I'm going to do here is just name this head just say prime head icon okay and now we can take this icon, control select this, hit parent. So now we're parented our group and we have zero values on our icon, which is what we need because now we have um, the prime re re retained all of the uh, values. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create an icon for our jaw. Okay, so let's go ahead and create another icon. So we'll say icon here. Let's rotate it in Y, 90 degrees, freeze transformations. I'm sorry about that. This is modify, freeze transformations. Um, and then we'll just say jaw icon. And then what we can do is our parent constraint. Oops, let's turn off our geometry mask here. Just say FK Joe. Select our icon constraint, parent constraint, icon, uh, delete the parent constraint. And then we're going to, uh, again, so let's go ahead and go into component mode. Actually, I already showed you that method, so let's go ahead and do it the other method now. So we're going to drag our entire object, which is pulling on the transformation node, and we can shape this out the way we want it to be. And let's place it about there. This is just sort of the icon for the jaw. Okay, so now we've got our pivot point here, but we want our pivot point to be at the jaw because if we use the rotate tool, we don't want to rotate from the jaw, we want to rotate from the pivot of the joint. So what we're going to do, let's go ahead and uh, hide our polygons here. And we're going to um, make sure we have our move tool selected. So if we were to just select this, uh, and we're going to hold uh, D. So now we're controlling the pivot point. And we're going to hold V so we can use the snapping method. And then we're going to middle mouse drag next to the base of the joint and then let go of everything. So now our pivot point is from the base of the joint. So we've moved our pivot point. Uh, we've got values now and we can't freeze transformations. So again, let's go ahead and make our pad. Uh, this button I'm using, this button I'm using is the create empty group from here. That's all it is. So I'm just gonna create an empty group. All right. So now we've got our icon. Let's copy the name. Let's 
let's say uh, prime keep our naming convention the same prime jaw icon all right so now what we can do since this is in the correct position we don't have to use the joint we can just use the icon just use parent constraint bring our icon up or our pad up delete this and parent the group under or parent under the group so now that we've got our icon and we've got values but here's here's the thing about these values now that this icon is under this group we can freeze transformations on this and it'll maintain uh, its orientation because it's parented under this group instead of the world now it's not going to take the world's orientation it's going to take the primes orientation okay so now we've got our icon in place all right so now we've got both icons in place let's go ahead and bring back our geometry okay so this is going to be our fk control over the joint not our dynamic we're not really going to have a dynamic control because it's dynamic so that is doesn't make sense so let's go ahead and bring in our control over the joints so let's select the head icon and go up to the head joints here so this is going to be the driver we're going to do a constraint again and this is going to be the driven and this time we're going to do a parent constraint and I like to use maintain offset but again it's not going to matter because the orientation is the same but whenever I'm placing icons, I do maintain offset. So let's go ahead and add. So now our icon is controlling this joint. Everything it does. Cool. So the next thing we're going to do is the jaw. The head is pretty simple, but the jaw is a little bit more. So let's go ahead and select our icon here. We're controlling FK, remember. So icon, joint, driver driven constraint parent uh, I'm not going to the option box again because it's keeping my settings from the last time I used it okay and I remember using it on, on this joint so now that we've got our joint controlling our FK and you can see the fanning of it but we're we're going to control where the positioning is of that bind joint with a switch uh, okay so there's a couple of ways to do this switch now, there's set driven keys, or you can use nodes. I like to personally use nodes because it's a lot, um, I, it's just more comfortable in my uh, situation whenever I'm using it because I, I like to use the node editor a lot for my rigging, and it's, it's really, it seems very fluid and it's very visual versus uh, set driven keys. It's kind of visual by coloration of the channel box, but uh, I like to use nodes. Okay, so with our icon selected, this is where we're going to have our switch. Um, so we're going to go ahead and go to edit in the channel box, add attribute. We're going to name this FK dynamic switch. And let me talk about this for a second. So we've got the the wording is important here. The the orientation or the uh, positioning of the wording. So we got FK before dynamics, which means that at the beginning we have FK and at the end we have dynamics. It's it's a little bit more comfortable and readable and usable that way for animation. That's what's important here. As riggers, we're trying to make it easy to animate. So we've got FK dynamics. So we're going to do a zero to 10. I'm going to talk about this too for a second. So we got zero to 10 value. And I like to do 0 to 10 for our blends because it's a little bit longer of a blending period and a little bit more control. So I'm going to add one like this, and then I'm going to say uh, call this one 0 to 1, and I'm just going to do a 0 to 1 just to show what's going on here. And it's 0 to 1 doesn't make sense for Maya, so let's just say stupid. Oh, let's see. Stupid blend. I don't like doing this way at all. Uh, there's a little bit more issues as there are uh, another thing that you have to do when you do a zero to ten, but that's it's pretty simple. So if the way we use these controls to blend is we either type in a value here or you select the 
uh, attribute and you go into the viewer in empty space and middle mouse drag. You see the two little arrows that come up and you can see the blend between zero and 10. The movement of my mouse is about this far between here and here. So if we go back to zero, if we click on this, the movement of the mouse is zero to one. So it's like this far. So this little switch right here versus this big switch right here to go in between is a little bit more comfortable. And that's what our job as riggers is, is to make the, the, uh, the animation comfortable. So let's go ahead and delete that blend. Delete attribute. Okay, so we have our zero to 10 uh, a blend here. So with our icon selected, and our, um, actually let's just select nothing so I can show you how to open it. Okay, so we're gonna go up to Window, Node Editor. Okay, so this is where the node editor is, and this is what I like using a lot. So, uh, so we're going to select our icon, and we're going to select our. Uh, did I use? I did. Uh, okay, so we don't use want to use uh, or a parent constraint on the jaw. We want to use an orient constraint because we're. Um, blending between the orientation not the parenting because if I were to drag uh, go ahead and drag let's say this FK icon since it's parent constraint on there we can drag this and you can see that this is not what we want we want just an orient constraint so let's go ahead and go to our FK and delete that parent constraint and we're gonna select our icon again select our FK joint we're going to go up to constrain, orient constraint, maintain offset, add. So now we have an orient constraint here. So now this is just controlling the orientation and not the parenting. The icon moves around. And we're just going to go ahead and turn off our translations on this icon anyway. Um, so with our icon selected, let's go ahead and empty our graph here. We can select our icon and add it to the graph because we're going to need that and then our orient constraint, and we're going to add that to the graph as well. So now we have an icon shape, an icon transformation, and an orient constraint here. This is not the orient constraint we want. We want the one that's on the bind joint. Sorry about that. Okay, so we're going to go up to the bind of the jaw. This is the orient constraint that we want to add, because this is the one that we're blending remember okay so let's go ahead and add this one I noticed that because there was already a connection between the other two and that's not what we're doing here okay so we have a shape and a transformation node now the transformation node if you click on a transformation node you notice that this is where our attribute is and this is what we're using if you click on the shape there's nothing here we don't need shape nodes for this particular uh, node editing so let's go ahead and remove this from the graph Make sure you select, you hit the garbage can here and not the delete key because you will delete it. So let's hit the garbage can. Okay, so now we have our icon and our orient constraint. And what we're going to do here is we're going to blend, keyword blend. Okay, so if we hit click in the empty space here and hit tab, if we just type in blend, you can see that there's a lot of different kind of blending here. But what we're going to use is a blend colors node. Blend colors node is here's how it works okay you have a blender and you have a color one with RGB and a color two with RGB when the blender value is at zero it's using the RGB channels of color two and when the blender is at one it's using the RGB values of color one so if we go ahead and zero out these values uh, or we could just say one here and one here uh, and we use our blender at one or at zero we're using red so if we look at our attribute editor you can see that we're using uh, red our output color is going to be fully color 2 okay so let's just zero out these values really quick let's name our blend colors node it's really important to remember to name as you go along so blend colors um, we'll say FK dynamic switch cool all right now let's go ahead and expand our uh, jaw icon and we're going to take a look, look at something here. Okay, so if you look over here, 
we've got our FK dynamic switch. And this value, remember, this is a 0 to 10. But we're going to plug it into Blender of the, the blender of the color uh, blend color node. And this value is 0 to 1. This is what I was talking about, that extra step that you have to take when you use change to make it more comfortable from 0 to 10 instead of 0 to 1. So what we have to do here is we have to drop in a multiply divide node. So let's drop in a multiply divide node. And I'm going to name this node multiply divide md normalize switch value. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to left click and drag out of the FK dynamic switch and we're going to connect it to input 1x. Okay? Cuz this is one value that we're using here. So we can zero out our input 2. And let's take a look at our multiply divide node. Multiply divide node has an operation. You can either multiply or divide, or you can go to the power of. But we're just going to multiply this value. I could divide, but it's much easier, in my opinion, just to multiply to a decimal. And remember, we're normalizing the value from 0 to 10 to 0 to 1. So all you have to do is multiply by the constant of 0.1. So now, 2 or let's say say the value of 6 is now 0.6 so it's 0 to 1 all right so what we're going to do now is take our output uh, remember our channel is x okay so just x and we're going to plug it into our blender so now our switch here if we see our icon our switch is 0 to 10 if we stop at 6 this is going to be 0.6 okay so we'll just bring this back to zero. Cool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use this blend colors node to control the orient constraint. And the way this works is we're either orient constraint to the FK or the dynamic. as one or the other, the value. But we're going to blend between the two. That way we can have a soft uh, blend between both chains. Now, and we can get like a middle position of the bind joint. So this is only controlling, this icon would only be controlling it halfway or something like that. So what we're going to do is select our orient constraint and look at our values here. So we've got FK and dynamic. And we're going to use our blend colors to control these values of 0 to 1. So if we select our blend colors here and go over here, remember 0 on our icon is FK and 10 or 1 on our blender is dynamic. So if we're using our zero values for FK uh, to control a zero to one, let's just choose the red channel and put in a one here. So this one is going to be uh, one to zero. We want it reversed on here so when it's at zero it's an FK which is red channel and when it's at 10 it's at zero which is the output for 10 or one on the blender so it's going to be zero and for and we're going to use the same blend color node for the dynamic chain so we, we're going to use the green channel now so zero we want it zero on zero and one on ten so we can put our one here so when our blender is at uh, ten we've got an output of one from the green channel okay so now we're going to connect our blend colors to our orient constraint we're going to use our output red channel to control our FK. So let's go ahead and drag this over FK. You can see that we have a, an input value here. It's turned yellow on the orient constraint. Let's go ahead and connect up our green to output green to the dynamic chain. So now you can see it's zero. So now we're in fully FK. So let's go ahead and select our icon and check this out. So if we rotate up our FK chain, this is our FK chain, is the purple one. Because it's, pur it's purple because of this. So if we middle mouse drag our attribute here, we can see it's blending between the dynamic and the FK using just the blend colors node. And of course, normalizing the value and then connecting it to the uh, attribute here. So this is this is actually a really simple setup. It's just a couple of nodes added to control. And you could do this with set driven keys, but I like to use these two nodes instead. All right, so let's go ahead and close our attribute editor here. Let's zero out these values. 
the next thing we're going to do is set up our dynamics uh, for our chain. And the way this is going to work, okay, is I'm going to have something, uh, it's going to be based off of an aim constraint uh, and, so, and soft bodies. Okay, so it's, it's going to be a little bit more complicated at this point, but it's still, I'm going to try and keep it as simple as I can. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some geometry that stays with this icon here, this FK icon. The geometry is going to stay with this icon, and I'm going to use that as the soft bodies. Uh, you can't use NURBS uh, circles as soft bodies because it's just not doesn't work that way. So all I really need to do is create a polygon plane. Let's just say plane here. This is all we need right here. Why is my oh, geometry mask? And I changed my Lambert one, didn't I? I'm gonna I'm gonna fix this really quick. So we'll say existing material. We'll say two. Let's add another one. His favorite Lambert. Let's just say give it brown. And then this one we can go back to default. So this is our default Lambert one. Okay. All right. So what we're gonna do is lighten this up a little bit. What we're going to do here is use this Lambert, uh, this polygon plane here, and this is going to be what is on this uh, NURB circle. So we check this NURB circle out. X is our value here. What we're going to do is we're going to get this to be on X. Uh, this isn't as important to orient it, but it's just helpful. So we're going to rotate it 90 degrees in Z. So now our plane is... Uh, uh, perpendicular to X and we're going to modify freeze transformations. So now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this up to our circle in the right orientation. So we're going to use our parent constraint method again. I use this method a lot. So instead of going up and hitting parent constraint and then deleting it, I have a coded out Python button here. I can just show you the code really quick. It's actually pretty simple. Driver driven temp constraint, delete the temp constraint. You can freeze the video, I'll leave it here for a second if you need to look. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm just gonna use that button. So we're gonna do driver, driven, parent constraint, snap. We're gonna wait a second for Python to load, or PyMail to load. And then now it's snapped to the uh, transformation node orientation of the icon. So now we can bring this out to about where the icon is. And what we can use is the curve snap tool. So this is C instead of holding, I'm just holding down C and I'm just gonna middle and mouse back drag on that curve. So this polygon is gonna be where, uh, where this uh, dynamic chain is going to point at. And I'm gonna show you how I get that to work. So I'm just gonna bring this down like a lot to about the center here of the icon. It's about right, seems about right, okay. Now, what we can do is um, we have values here. These aren't necessarily uh, going to matter, so I can actually modify freeze transformations. The, the values of this uh, polygon plane do not matter because we're not rotating it or anything like that. And we're not controlling. We're just aiming at it. So wherever it is in space is where we're aiming. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to call this our aim um, actually, let's just leave it as plane first. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to create a soft body from this plane. So we go up to uh, dynamics and come over here to soft rigid bodies and go down to create soft body. See how um, we've got, uh, I'm just going to go back here for a second before I froze transformations and see what happens with this soft body. 
Okay, well, we're just going to leave the transformations there because you can see that this creates another plane with the same orientation and our part particles are here and instead of them being a box around, it takes the orientation of the particles. So the, this transformations do not matter at all. I mean, if you want to, you can freeze the scales, uh, but in the transfer uh, transforms uh, or the translations, but it doesn't matter because it's, they're not doing anything. All right, so we have our particles and our plane here. So I'm going to show you exactly how this uh, soft bodies system works. Is um, actually let's delete this so I can show you what goes on here. So if we go up to our soft body options box. And I'll just reset the uh, the options so we can see exactly what's going on here. We're not going to use this original as make soft. We're going to use uh, duplicate and make the copy soft. Okay, so it's going to make a copy of this plane and then make it soft. And then we're going to use the non soft as a goal. So the goal is it's always trying to catch up. That's all it's doing is always it's always trying to catch up. We can leave the weight at five for now, or 0.5 for now. Let's just create. So now we have a copy of this plane, right? And we can name this goal. So we can see what we're looking at here. And then this is going to be follow goal. And what it's using is these particles to catch up with this goal, the components. This part there's four particles here one for each vertice, but that's not really important right now. It's, what's important is that this goal, this is following the goal. So if we go ahead and give ourselves some timeline here, let's say 3000, all right? And what I'm going to do is with the goal selected, just to show you what's going on here, I'm going to go up to Solvers, Interactive Playback. This is gonna start our timeline, and if I, with the goal selected, and the move tool, I can pull this and you can see it's kind of moving around and it's trying to catch up with where the positioning is of the goal. Okay. So I'm just going to Z back here and uh, Z back here. Okay. Um, one of the things, um, I think I'm just going to go ahead and, z and fix these while I'm here. I'm going to create another group above this just so during the tutorial we don't try to zero out uh, this goal here. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to use um, empty group goal driven parent not that button this button okay so now our group is here let's put the goal let's say Group goal. And with this selected, we can freeze transformations. And we have zeros here. Good. Okay, so now we have our group. All right. And our follow goal. These aren't going to, I'm not going to try and zero these out because it's always trying to follow this. The way I'm going to zero those values out or get them back to where they are is by uh, resetting the timeline. All right. So now what we're going to do is um, we need a way to get this dynamic chain here to aim at this um, either the the particles or the or the uh, this plane here because this is what's going to be dynamic is these objects here. So what we're going to do is with the uh, goal selected. We need to check one thing is that if we go up to our polygons and edit UVs, this we're going to use a point on poly constraint and they are based on UVs. We need to make sure that our borders are white here because this is our edges of our polygon plane. So we just need to make sure that they're not all at one point in the UV texture editor because then our point on poly constraint won't work right. So we can close that for now. All right, so let's go back to object mode here with this. Um, object selected, we're going to create a locator. So let's go up to create locator, and this is going to be I'll just rename it locator aim vector. 
Okay. And now with this, uh, what we're going to do is point on poly this locator to this plane. Okay, because that's how we're going to aim this joint because we can't aim this joint at this plane and we can't aim it at these um, particles either. We have to use a locator. So with the plane selected, uh, we're going to command or control select because we're going to do driver driven, the locator. Let's go up to our animation menu here, constrain, point on poly. And you can see now it took the uh, bottom left here. It's not really going to matter because on our aim constraint we're going to use maintain offset just as long as it's in the general area of where it's aiming. Okay, so now we have this uh, point on poly constraint. We're going to leave this one here. Let's bring down the size of our locator a little bit here so we can see what's going on. Uh, okay, so now we're going to check on our locator really quick. So if we do our, if we have our goal selected, interactive playback, we can now see that our locator is moving around. Okay, so if we just go ahead and reset this and zero out our plane here. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is I want this icon to be in control of the goal. So I can move this icon around to control the goal. Okay, so all I really need to do here is with this icon selected, I can go to the group goal, um, the goal group, and I can use that as the driven. So we're going to do a parent constraint, another constraint. Um, so this time we're going to use yeah, maintain offsets, okay, because I'm using an icon. So now, instead of selecting that plane, which that's kind of nasty for animators to be selecting a plane. Let's just get an icon in there. So we can use this icon to control it now. So if I select this icon and uh, I do our interactive playback, uh, dynamics, I added a button here. This is all this is, is interactive playback here. I'm just going to use this button from now on. So if we use our interactive playback and with our icon selected, rotate it around. Let's get our Maya's weird about this. I'm not pressing any buttons, Maya. All right, move it around. You can see the locator is now moving around, and that's what we're going to aim at. So we can stop our interactive playback, zero out our icon. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use this locator as an aim constraint for this joint. Okay, so if we go ahead and go to our... We're going to do driver driven again. So this locator is going to be our driver and our driven is going to be the joint itself. So select this, then select the joint. Uh, animation, constraint, uh, aim, options. And the thing that we're going to do here is we need to uh, select so here's, here's our options. We're going to use maintain offset and we're going to use our aim vector. Our aim vector for this joint is down the X axis. So if we look here, it's down the X axis. So this is X, Y, Z. We have one. And in our up vector uh, is we're going to use our object rotation up here. And what we're going to do is we're going to select this icon because it's at the top of the head because that's what makes sense. We're going to select it, copy its name and bring it into the world up object. And then we're going to use our world up vector y and our up vector one in x. So now since we selected this, we need to reselect our icon, our, our locator, and our dynamic joint, and go ahead and add our aim constraint. So now what we're going to do, I'm just going to show you what's going on here. If we switch this over to 5, this is our blend between, and we select our icon here, and use our interactive playback, we can see that we have a dynamic uh, chain here. So that's exactly what's going on here. This is how we get our, the FK is straight on to this icon, but the, but the dynamic chain is trying to catch up to it. Okay, so that's how we get our jiggle in our, that's, that's, it's, now you're actually starting to see it come together. It's,
that's how we get our jiggle inside of that uh, dynamic joint. So with this icon, let's go back to our FK. And another thing I like to do is add another um, sort of visual. This locator is a nice visual, but I like to have just a NURB circle in there to show where the dynamics is uh, pointing at. So I'm just going to create another NURB circle using driver. Let's make sure this is down the x-axis. Freeze transformations. Modify freeze transformations. I'm going to select this. Select the driven. Do our parent constraint snap. And then I'm going to select this one. And with this axis selected, see how it's yellow now, I'm going to curve snap to this one. And then I'm going to bring it down to like smaller than the other one just like right around where that locator is. And now I'm going to name this display dynamics icon. Then what I'm going to do is now we have some values in here. I'm going to create another empty group and then driver driven parent constraint snap. I'll name this prime display icon parent this one. Okay, so I'm just going to freeze transformations on this icon. I'm going to do it this way from now on. This is my uh, custom marking menu. This is just freeze transformations. Okay, so instead of coming up to modify freeze transformations. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is I don't want this icon to be selected because it's just going to display where the aim is. So I'm just going to select this icon, go to the attribute editor, and I'm going to go to the shape. You can do this under the transformation, but the uh, shape overrides it. So we're just going to go to the shape, object, object display, drawing overrides. We're going to enable overrides. What we're going to do is we're going to change this from normal to template, or you can do reference, either one will work. So now I can't select that nerve circle in space. So we don't need an animator to select that. They just need to see it. All right. So now what I'm going to do is with, uh, I'm going to drive the positioning of this uh, with the locator. So I can select the locator as the driver, then the driven, then I can do a constraint, a parent, and maintain offset. That's okay. Even though they're well, there is going to be one now, so we need it to be there. Maintain offset on. Okay, so we need it to follow it. And what we're going to do now is we can just hide this. We can hide our polygons here. Let's just go ahead and put this all into one group. So we're going to take our follow goal, our group goal, and our locator. And we're going to go to uh, create or... Um, if you just hit G on the keyboard, or Command G on the keyboard, it's a group. So we're just going to group it. We're going to call this, um, I don't know, Jaw Dynamics. And then we can just take this group and we can hide it. Oops, I just hit Maya. That's weird. Okay, let's Control Hide. All right, so now we can all, all we have to see is this dynamic circle here. So let's uh, do an interactive playback, take a look. So now you can see where it's aiming all the time. And uh, so next, what we're going to do is we're going to get this icon to follow this icon, which is important. And then you would then have this icon follow the shield and everything like that. That way the dynamics work uh, the way you need them to. So with this icon selected, what we're going to do is have this icon follow this uh, icon here. So we don't need to do a parent constraint because it's just icons to icons. So what we can do here is just take this and parent it under this icon. So now what we can do is we can actually take this icon and have the dynamics on this one or the shield or even the arm. It'll follow all the way into the body and in, you know into world because this is based off of soft bodies. So we can just take the head icon here and you can see that our dynamics are working. Okay, 
So let's go ahead and stop the playback. And now we need to get our joint chains to work together as well because the icons are just controlling the orientation. So what we need to do is go to our head uh, here. We can just expand this. This is our end joint. Uh, you can parent these groups under either or uh, of these joints. I'm just going to do the end joint. So we can say uh, the FK, the dynamic, and the bind chain null groups are all going under. So these are the children, then the parent last. So now they're all parented under the head. So the head moves as one now. Okay, uh, you can see that our our uh, dynamics are going to be different from where the head is in space. So if I zero this out. Okay, so now we've pretty much got the system completely working. Uh, one more thing that I'm going to go ahead and add is the dynamic switch stiffness uh, attribute here. So if I just go ahead and add an attribute and say dynamics stiffness. We're going to do another 0 to 10 and click add. Now, um, what we're going to do here is uh, we're, we're using the uh, goal. So if we go to our jaw dynamics here and we're going to use the um, follow goal attributes we're going to look for our, uh, let's actually go to our um, particles here. Mm, hang on just one second, bear with me. Goal weight, zero. This is what we're plugging into here. So the 0.5, this is how we're going to control our stiffness. So we're just going to go ahead and do this all from the node editor again. So let's just select this. Select our particles here. Go to Window. Oops. Let's not create a node. Let's window Node Editor. All right. So what we need to do um, is we need to be in our shape here. So you can see shape over here. That's where our goal weight is. We're going to bring that over here. And this is our icon that has our attribute. So we can just bring these over to the side because we don't need those. So let's just go ahead and expand both of these. All right, so we're looking at our particle, and we can see goal weight here. So this is our goal weight zero. This is what's driving our stiffness. So let's bring this, just this one upwards a little bit here. Let's bring this one down. We're going to use our dynamic stiffness to control the goal weight. Our goal weight is... Uh, is 0 to 1. It's a 0 to 1 value. And again, we did a 0 to 10. Um, one of the things that we're going to have to deal with here, so let's just put in our multiply divide. Breaking is a lot of using the same methods over and over and over again. All right, so we're going to use the stiffness here, plug it into our input 1x, use our output x into our goal weight 0. Now one of the things that we're going to have to fix on our attribute is uh, here's an issue here is if our stiffness is at zero, this means our, our goal weight is going to be at zero. Uh, the dynamics is just going to float off and do you know whatever. So if I just oops again here, oh we're in FK. Hold on. So if we turn on our, our dynamics here. Do our interactive playback and rotate our joint. Okay, what's going on here? Our goal weight is at zero. That it's not moving because of that. So if we bring this up to let's say five. So now our stiffness is at 5. It should move. So if we put, bring this back to 0. Okay. Do our interactive playback. So now we've got some stiffness. But here's an issue. Is it's still trying to catch up. I can bring this uh, I can bring this down to 1. 
we don't want it to go to zero because you can see that one barely is doing anything. Starter interactive playback. It's just kind of moves off here. If we were to put a zero in, it just kind of doesn't, it's gone. It loses everything. And we don't want that to happen. We can leave it at one, but uh, we don't want it to go to zero. So let's go to our dynamic stiffness attribute, and we're going to go to edit attribute and put in um, a one here. So we have a minimum of one on the attribute now, so we cannot go to zero. Okay, so that's that's about it. Um, I could go ahead and bind to this uh, just to show you, but that's that's for a different podcast, a different day. What's important here is that our dynamic uh, stiffness is working now. So let's leave this at five. Let's go to seven. Seven is a little bit more accurate for a jaw, in my opinion, or even eight for stiffness. And we have our dynamics here, and then we can we can control it by the head, up and down on here. It's not very it's moving very much now. We put this at seven. It's wiggling a little bit. That's more jaw-like, in my opinion. Our attributes aren't showing up because our interactive playback's going. Let's go here. Five. Interactive playback. And that is how you get jiggle joints. Um, this is not limited to aim constraints because that's what's going on here. It's based off of an aim constraint. You can do a point constraint and have uh, an icon control just the positioning of one other joint. Uh, it's it's just the the jiggle is off of the soft body, but this is not limited to aim constraints. Anyway, thanks for watching. It's been a fun time.